All right. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, uh, whoever you are. Uh, my name is Charles Nebeze, and I'm the Vice President, Business Development and Commercialization uh, with the Center for Excellence in Mining Innovation. And uh, we're based right here in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. I would like to, um, uh, again, welcome you to this, to this webinar. Um, what we'll do is uh, over the next couple of minutes, we're going to hear Todd Burns speak to us about uh, Safe Environmental and their technology, which can enable uh, better whole road management. And um, we, what we will ask you to do is if you have any questions, uh, please type them into the chat box. And, uh, and also if, um, if you have any questions uh, post the, the webinar, you'll be able to send us an email and we'll be able to answer your questions. Uh, we will also be providing you a copy of the link to watch this video uh, post, post webinar as well. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Todd Burns, uh, who is uh, the CEO of uh, Safe Environmental. Uh, Todd, go ahead. Awesome, well, thank you for the introduction, Charles. Um, you know, thank you also for the excuse to wear a suit. I don't think I've worn one for a long time. <laughs> so, and it's, you know, admittedly it's snowing outside, but I chose to wear uh, a summer suit to pretend I'm in Africa or something. We're going to show a couple of videos later of roads in Africa. So, you know, um, you know, with all this, uh, you know, lack of travel going on, uh, you know, it's the, it's the small little victories every day that count. So anyways, uh, you know, beyond that, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak and tell our story, Charles, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks to the whole team from SEMI. Uh, we've known you guys for a few years now and really value the relationship. So Look forward to telling everyone our story today. I'm sure a lot of you already know about who we are and what we stand for, but I'm gonna talk a lot about Earth Time and Dust Off today, how we use our technologies to make haul roads and mines more efficient, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot about core values actually, ESG and, and CSR. So if you don't know what those are, we'll talk a bit, about a bit more about those uh, later on in the presentation. So, you know, without further ado, I'll just start talking a bit about the company as I, uh, as I talk, I figured, you know, this is a new thing. There's a lot of stuff on that slide, a lot, you know, probably too much for you all to digest, but uh, some really, you know, as I'm talking, look at some of these stats, yeah, unless you're an engineer, you wouldn't understand all of them, but like 12% reduction in cost to build roads, 17.4% reduction in fuel consumption for, for haul trucks using our uh, treated roads, you know, 90% reduction in dust. I mean, everybody can, can understand those figures. So that's the type of stuff that we're actually producing for our mining clients. Uh, but who we are as a company, so Cypher Environmental is headquartered here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, uh, the, the, uh, the center of everything in the middle of nowhere all at the same time. <laughs> so, um, so we manufacture everything here in Winnipeg uh, and we ship it uh, around the world, uh, um, primarily through a great team of distributors. I see a lot of you guys on the call today, so thanks for joining and a uh, big hello to everyone who's a, a, an official member of the Cypher team. You see a lot of flags on the map there, so... It uh, gives you an idea of, uh, of the actual global reach we have as a company. So, uh, so if we don't have a distributor, we do work directly with, uh, with mining clients. Uh, and of course, we don't just work with mining clients. We work, <clears throat> sorry, we work with, you know, municipal sector, uh, you know, oil and gas, forestry, agriculture. I mean, everybody who has road assets are all things we can help them improve to, you know, reduce their environmental impact and reduce their OPEX. So I'm going to jump right in and talk about that. And of course, talk about core values, that's really important to us. So a great segue into this. So you're gonna see our tagline, always do what's right. Uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's true that it's actually a, a value statement more than a tagline, uh, but you know, it's a, it, it's, a, it's, it's a core philosophy of what we stand for at the company. Uh, you know, most people that don't actually see it this way, but for us, core values are actually a part of our strategy. Without buy-in and full adoption of core values from our entire team, uh, we can't actually get alignment and then achieve the goals and the tasks that we that we have ahead of ourselves. And so, uh, with with our team members actually coming to to the table, you know, with their heart, not just in their head, uh, they they really seem to get it. And we have we have buy-in and great energy amongst the team, and we come up with great ideas like this. Uh, so the you know we give away a lot of money every year. We're we're trying to get into more and more and philanthropic endeavors. And I mean. The, the actual use of our, our product actually screams ESG and CSR already, uh, which is environmental social governance and corporate social responsibility. Uh, apologize for those who, who aren't in the mining industry you might think I'm talking about CSI Miami or something like that, but CSR, corporate social responsibility. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk later actually about really the sort of announcement today of, of a really cool program, which is called the Green Roads Program, which ties into that 
that second bullet point there of the five percent of the contract values donated back to communities. So excited to talk about that and a big thing about what we do at Cypher these days. So you know, a lot of industry partners that we leverage to to gain success, you know, requires uh, a lot of people, a lot of stakeholders or external stakeholders and champions really pulling for us. Uh, and so we leverage uh, we leverage the expertise of these these uh these third parties and uh really have a lot of great what i like to refer to as strategic alliances you're going to see sammy's logo up there today and so certainly they're they're uh they're one of them uh and so um anyways and, and it's with with it's the the energy created by all these people that really helps drive us forward as a team so the problems so what are we actually solving for our mining clients because i am here to talk about uh technology today not just uh <laughs> not just core values uh but uh, these are sort of exacerbated problems that you're seeing in, in the picture today. Uh, but uh, you know, high costs for construction materials, reducing dust, you know, the, the health risks and the safety risks that, that are that are caused by that dust, the poor road quality, uh, you know, excessive water consumption and fuel consumption for dust control and just for regular everyday use of the road. Uh, so just underperforming roads, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, underperforming roads uh, that we can we can make better. So. You know, haulage costs are up to 50 percent of, uh, of of operating costs for an open pit mine, and so if we can actually address those haulage costs through through building better roads, it uh, it makes a dramatic impact on the overall optics of a mine and and productivity. So you know, I like to like actually visually play for people what it is we're actually doing. So. See how busy that road was there. Normally they wouldn't be able to drive that fast or that close together because of the dust clouds, uh, you know, so we're improving productivity, uh, you know, so, you know, we're, so we're improving productivity, we're keeping the dust out of the environment. So, you know, you all get it, safety, et cetera, et cetera, health, all that good stuff from, from a mining perspective. I mean, look at the impact that's having on their productivity. Uh, and this is a road built, uh, this is in Guinea. This is a haul road uh, from, from the port to the mine at a bauxite mine, and it's almost, pure clay. And so it actually is stabilized with both products, Ursime and Dustop, which is I thought thought why we would open with this video. Uh, the products can be used on their own separately or they can be used in combination together. Uh, but this is the typical end result. So what is Ursime? So, so Ursime is a stabilizer for high clay content material. Uh, we're actually going to do a very, very brief case study, meaning a couple of slides later on this actual project. This is the Shenhua coal mine. Uh, in Inner Mongolia, China. It's actually raining. You can't see it very well probably in this picture right now, but it's raining in that picture. And that's a road that's built with like 90% fine. So we're talking about like pure clay and silt materials, very, very poor materials to build roads with. And as you can see, a very heavy weight moving over top of it and uh, very, very minimal, if any effect at all on the road behind it. So uh, speaks volumes to what it is that we can do, especially in the wet weather, which is really the issues with, with building clay, which is what we're going to address with first time. So Ursime is a stabilizer that, that uh, works specifically on high clay content materials, uh, which are normally marginal in terms of their engineering properties. So we give you the ability to build rows using these marginal materials and save costs on more expensive materials. So, uh, so aggregates and gravels and things like that. Uh, so nearly the one major differentiator in the product is that it's a, it's a permanent solution. One application lasts last uh, i don't want to say a lifetime but it's a last many years one at one meter treats 33 cubic meters of compacted soil as well so in terms of how concentrated it is it's unrivaled you could you could show up uh you know if i was building just a kilometer of let's say an access road to mine you know similar to a secondary road for municipality uh i could treat it with 40 liters of product like i could i could show up with that amount of product in my suitcase <laughs> so uh in terms of logistics costs, uh, they're, they're negligible and impact on the environment to transport it from Winnipeg to other places around the world. Uh, so in terms of maintenance costs, you know, reducing the impact of water, you know, into the clay and the swelling. So substantially reducing maintenance costs, uh, increase in CBR, California bearing ratio, that's an engineering term for soil strength and rolling resistance. So we're going to talk a bit more about rolling resistance later, but essentially it's a measure of deflection on the road. And we've seen through treating our roads that we can actually uh, by reducing that def deflection, the amount of movement on the road when a heavy weight drives over top of it, it reduces the amount of friction between the tire and the road. Think about uh, driving on an underinflated tire. And so therefore it makes, uh, I see Ivan Heron on the list. I'm sure he's, his ears are perking up, perking up <laughs> right now. But uh, it's like driving on an underinflated tire. And so therefore become much less fuel efficient and less productive. 
And so we're actually addressing it, uh, not through the tire, but through the road. And as a result, you actually increase tire life as well. Uh, but uh, uh, so significant reduction in swell during the rain. And, and the most important thing, of course, non-corrosive, non-toxic and biodegradable. Uh, so you might wonder, how is a, a biodegradable product uh, going to last for years? And I'm going to address that in another slide coming up. Uh, but basically, Ursime itself, what is it? It's a, it's a highly concentrated liquid. So like I said, I could bring it to, to that job site in my suitcase so for, that, for that smaller road, not for a, for a mine hall road, of course. But uh, it's a highly concentrated liquid that you would pour into a water truck, a standard water truck you'd already have at a mine site, uh, and spray it onto the roads should they have the proper clay content. And then through compaction, it actually provides lasting strength and compaction values more substantial than, well, we increase density after compaction is really what we do the easiest way to explain it. And through, through that increase in density, we increase permeability, sorry, we reduce permeability, reduce swell and increase CBR. And so those lasting compaction values and strength give you uh, a long-term long -term stability. And because we're actually, because we're actually working on the, the clay particle itself, we're actually binding the clay together in a more efficient manner than, than previously, and we're not allowing it to expand in the presence of water, or we're substantially reducing its ability to expand in the presence of water. Uh, and, and therefore, because that's an, a permanent impact on that clay particle, we're not introducing like a binder like cement or something to glue the soil together. We're just using the clay. That it's a, it's a permanent reaction, and therefore you get long-term effects of stabilization. Uh, so, you know, so beyond, you know, I talked before about reducing uh, material requirements. So this is a, just a very brief example, but the unstabilized natural soil would be the clay and the granular base is the expensive stuff. Uh, so in this case, uh, you know, you use a lot less of the expensive stuff and a lot more of the cheap stuff. Uh, you're all, you do it all in an environmentally friendly manner. And so talking about increasing CBR, California bearing ratio. Uh, so the proof's in the pudding here, but several third party lab examples of how we increase CBR or California bearing ratio um, for, uh, for our clients. Uh, normally I would elaborate a bit on this, but, uh, but I won't here because I don't have a lot of time today. Uh, but for me, the more important thing is reducing swell. So think about roads. We talked about Africa before. Think about in the rainy season in Africa, you have a lot of clay there. It's naturally weathered because of the, 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 high rain, the high rainfall and the high annual temperatures you get. Uh, you just have a lot of clay. Think about the rainy season in Africa with the clay. All the roads expand and you can't use them or you spend a lot of money to rehabilitate them every year. So this is solving that kind of a problem. So now, you know, think about introdu introducing that to a to a, to a busy mining environment and uh, and you're, you're solving, you're making them a lot more efficient. So um, that's earth time in a, in a quick nutshell. Like Charles said, we'll, we'll answer some questions later if anybody has any. I apologize that I'm sort of, you know, zipping through the, the technical stuff, um, but uh, on to dust off. So earth time is a stabilizer specifically for high clay content materials. It will reduce dust as a side effect, but dust off is specifically used to address reducing dust. So for rows, stockpiles, tailings piles, we're going to show a little video on tailings later, but primarily for roads. And so really we designed it initially to be an environmentally friendly alternative to salt and to oil for dust control. They're the two most prevalently used products for dust control in the market today. Uh, so ours is a totally environmentally friendly alternative. Uh, I don't think it's listed on this slide, but we have a Boeing conformity, for example. So we're approved to be, to be used on airport. Uh, runways and airstrips because it's non uh, non corrosive and won't impact uh, the coatings or the paints on on uh, on the airplanes and so of course it won't won't do this it, the same the same will apply to your haul roads and equipment using uh, using the treated roads so uh, but at the end of the day you know the product is actually designed for dust control it's engineered to do what it does uh, so to to you know not only provide dust control but some safe stabilization as well. So reduce things like grading frequency, uh, you know, um, it, watering, of course, uh, that's the major concern. Most mines actually use water only for dust control. Uh, and they think of water as a free resource. Uh, but of course, it's the fuel they're burning all day long uh, that's, uh, that's causing the, the major cost and the major impact on the environment. And so, you know, if we just jump right next, to, right over to the next slide, you know, because the, the environmental stuff is a given for us, like we don't touch touch a raw material input unless it's environmentally friendly. Uh, but we're really trying to focus, especially with our mining clients, on how we're going to save you money. And so if you look at this, is just an example. Uh, this isn't actually a real world project, of course, but it's an example. It's, it's simple stuff. It's, this is an Excel spreadsheet. So it's not nothing that's uh, 
uh, rocket science here. So we're simply, you know, comparing application frequencies of water, the amount of water, the amount of labor, uh, fuel they're using, uh, and, and what that cost is to water the roads for dust control. I remember water is only as effective as as uh, as the evaporation rate is in that climate. So you know, the hotter it is, the the, the more frequently you need to add water, and so uh, you're really just chasing your tail. And uh, with dust off, it's a long term solution. You're applying water, but then it, you're not having to rewater over and over and over again. To, to get that dust control. And so if you look at this example, I mean, we're, relative, we're roughly half the cost. And look at the CO2 reductions here are quite substantial. And of course the, the savings in fuel, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, pretty easy to make the case. And so the products, you know, we talked about developing it to be a differentiator between uh, um, salt and oil. It's, it's not hygroscopic. So it doesn't work by just absorbing moisture from the atmosphere. So another major differentiator between dust off and salt uh, is that it doesn't get slippery when it's wet uh, because salt absor absorbs moisture and therefore gets really slippery because it, it gets too, too saturated to the surface. Uh, but uh, we're utilizing a blend of uh, proprietary blend of salts, sugars, and starches, so all natural ingredients, and we're binding everything together and uh, reducing the pore spaces in between the, uh, in between the soil particles of the surface, and so also providing um, a better performing road in wet weather as well, and, and it doesn't run off in the rain uh, like uh, like the fluorides and salt based products do, because of course you know the salt just gets absorbed into the, or the water absorbs the salt and it just runs off runs off the road eventually, and very very harmful of course as a result uh, to polluting groundwater and, and and roadside vegetation. So dust off is a totally environmentally friendly alternative, and and we have actually you know it's approved in a few jurisdictions for use as a stabilizer. Uh, not just as a dust suppressant. So uh, it's kind of like the Cadillac of dust suppressants, if you will, because uh, you get that stabilization effect as well. Uh, and no special equipment needed for, for, the, for the product's application. So I think it's pretty important to always point this out. The same water trucks that are being used to just drive around 24 hours a day can now be used to apply our product. And uh, well, you need less of them, first of all, or you can park or sell <laughs> some of them because you're just not using them anymore. So you're freeing up assets uh, and, uh, and uh, ultimately you're reducing your OPEX because you're not burning fuel all day long to drive them, drive them around. You're also increasing tire life on those water trucks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, but just standard beyond that, you know, a grader, sometimes you're going to be doing some compacting. Most of the time you're just in a, in a mining environment, especially on a haul road, you're just spraying it on and, and uh, letting the haul trucks do the compaction or you're doing some light uh, mixing an application when you're just doing road maintenance work anyways. So very easy for adoption for our mining clients. Uh, and, and just really quickly, the product is also applicable for tailings as well. We have a couple of varieties of, uh, of dust off. So if you're interested, just let us know and we can guide you as to which one is, is the best. But this one is called dust off liquid concentrate. And, uh, oh, sorry, it seems like we're missing a, sorry, we're missing a slide here. But anyways, this product would be applied onto tailings and uh, eliminates the, the water and wind erosion of tailings. Uh, so of course the major issue when, when mines are located near communities is, is the dust blowing from, from tailings piles into those communities. And so this eliminates that and any of the harmful contaminants from getting out of those tailings and into the community or into the natural environment. So a very, very similar approach in which you would uh, apply this dust off to a road. You're, the, you, as you can see in this picture, it's a standard water truck just spraying it's, uh, onto the tailings pile. So um, let me just show you one more example here of, uh, of, of dust stop. Sorry, I just got to get my cursor over the video. Here we go. So talked about productivity before. Um, so this, uh, this, this haul truck here, the thing I like about it eventually when it actually gets closer, as you can see the speed at which it's driving as well. Uh, there's, there's literally no dust emissions. And uh, so you can just see the actual impact on productivity. Uh, so we talk about OPEX and the impact on, in, on the environment, which is, which is nothing. I mean, normally there's a trade-off because you're either using salt or oil, both of which are bad for the environment, in which case dust off is all natural and, and uh, you know, several other secondary side effects you know, as a result. Oh, here's the tailings one. Sorry, the, that, that video got uh, inserted into the wrong spot. So I've already talked about tailings. Uh, I'm going to skip this video as well because I know we're running a little. Well, you know what? I'm going to I am going to show that video. So, apologies, it's going to be an old uh, cipher logo showing up here, or maybe not. But uh, um, all right, we'll just skip that video. It's not working. 
So I'm just going to go right into some global uh, mining references. So just a few of them because we don't have much time left here. Uh, and I wanted to really focus on references where we've either done really cool core value or CSR stuff or talk about, you know, you know saving energy consumption or OPEX at mines. Uh, Syncrude is the first one that came to, to, came, uh, came to mind for me. So we started working with them a little over 10 years ago and, and built several permanent haul roads. Uh, so, you know, in the oil sands, they, they have a very substantial shortage of, of granular material. Uh, so we're actually taking all of their overburden, which is really, really high clay content material, normally not suitable for building roads with and stabilizing it uh, with earth sign. And so remember one liter treats 33 cubic meters of compacted soil. So even though we're doing vast expanses of stabilized material, like 40 meter wide haul roads, uh, it is a very minimal investment uh, by the company in terms of the product. Now, just really quickly, just one, you know, piece of feedback we received from them uh, is reducing their rolling resistance. I talked a bit about it before. This is a simple chart uh, on the right that shows how uh, rolling resistance impacts the um, impacts the performance of Cat 797 haul trucks. So it's the biggest the biggest haul trucks Caterpillar makes. And uh, as you can see, Sim Simcrude had a, a very poor example to start with because of course we were talking about building roads with very poor materials. So that high clay content and material isn't very dense. Uh, and therefore has a high rolling resistance or it deflects a lot when the heavy weight's moving over top of it. And so a very substantial production in, uh, in <clears throat> sorry, in, in rolling resistance. And I don't have time to really explain this chart, but uh, it actually goes quite into quite, about a, quite a bit of detail about how, how much uh, we've improved productivity and reduced fuel consumption. I think overall, using this, uh, this uh, method, it would suggest a 65% reduction in fuel consumption as a result of change of rolling resistance. So not 65% overall, but 65% as a result of a change of rolling resistance. So pretty substantial. Uh, Shenhua, I talked with them a little bit before. So they did uh, they did 19, almost 20 kilometers of haul road. I, I actually personally went and built the demo road there in 2013. And in 2014, uh, they, they went uh, full blown and did uh, a massive expanse of haul roads. And, uh, you know, things were going great. We were getting reorders for them. And, and, uh, uh, and, and this is with Earth time again. So this is stabilizing the high clay content material. This is that first picture I showed of, uh, of, the, of the truck on the, on, the clay, on the high clay content road in the rain. Uh, so really substantial amount of issues in wet weather for this, for this, uh, for this client and, and a lot of rolling resistance as well. Um, a couple of years later, so I, don't, I think it was maybe 2017 or 2018, when we actually found this, they actually reported a 17.4% reduction in fuel consumption uh, as a result of the rolling resistance for them driving over top of the, the surface of our, uh, of our roads uh, in, a, in a May 2015 article of uh, safety in coal mine. So they actually wrote and, and published a paper without our knowledge. So <laughs> pretty cool, uh, pretty cool to see that. And so that, re that, that resulted in about a $3.6 million savings in uh, in fuel that year and over 10,000 tons of CO2 emissions. So pretty substantial stats. And I can assure you, you know, I wish I wish they did, but they didn't they didn't uh, make a spend of 3.6 million on uh, <laughs> on our product. So for, for the mining people there, uh, the payback and the relatively short, the extremely short term payback on your investment is quite substantial. Uh, and of course, really quickly now, just to get into uh, you know, what I was looking forward to talking about was always do what's right uh, and our new ESG and CSR initiatives, uh, the Cypher Green Roads program. So uh, that, that's me and a few of our uh, team members standing in front of one of the, one of the containers that, that was just loaded that was being shipped uh, to uh, one of Baffinland's, uh, well, to a community near Baffinland. And so really quickly, I'll talk about Baffinland project. And so we've been working with them since 2019 and, and uh, they've, got a, they've got one road uh, from from Milne Port into the mine, and so it's called the Tote Road. And so we've been helping them with their dust control on the Tote Road since 2019, and we'll be doing their airstrip and their haul roads in 2021 as a result. Uh, but it's uh, it's been a great uh, experience working with Baffinland uh, because there's uh, the, the the indigenous people up there really still rely on uh, on the land. Um, Baffinland is very um, careful about uh, being stewards of the land, and so. 
uh, we approached them in, in, about this project, which was the, 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 the first initial, initial project of the Cypher Green Rose program. So we're pretty excited about it, which was a, a donation to Pond Inlet. So we, we donated 38,000 liters of dust off or two 40 foot containers. And of course, uh, we, we did this uh, in conjunction with Baffinland and NSSI, who's a logistics company, uh, Canadian logistics company who uh, offered to foot the bill to get the product there. So a big thanks to the two of them for partnering with us in that project. But uh, as a result, the community of Pond Inlet will actually be able to now start use, using the same technology that Baffinland or the, the mine is actually using to help reduce their environmental impact. And so I just think it's really fitting that that same technology, uh, which is being used to reduce the environmental impact of the mine on the community is used in the community itself. And so we're actually gonna be providing training to, uh, to the people in Pond Inlet so they actually know how to use the product. So we're gonna introduce new skill sets to the community. And uh, so, you know, we're really excited about it. And so it's just another way we can give back and help uh, help uh, mine mining operations in the future because this is going to be the first of hopefully hundreds of these moving forward but uh, help mining operations just sometimes bridge that bit of a gap they have in, in community relations and help smooth things over and uh, and just help everyone uh, you know maintain a positive energy so it's something we're really excited about so I'll uh, I'll end it on a high note and leave it at that Charles thanks again for the opportunity awesome thank you thank you thank you Todd um, Todd, we do have a, a few questions, but um, I'm going to pick um, maybe just a couple for you. Uh, so one of the questions is, uh, does the pro product leach out during the rainy season? And, and maybe on, on, on that question, Todd, maybe talk about agriculture and talk about how, you know, it's impacting the local, local communities as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, and that's one thing, I mean, I was, I was trying to keep it brief at the end there, but, you know, we talk a lot about the benefits of the mining and, and the mining um, industry. But uh, there's a lot of benefits to improving infrastructure in, in the community, such as in, in, in areas where there's ag agricultural roads, such as, as people being able to get their, their crops out in time or, or, or goods to market or, or just the, the impact of the actual road in the community. I mean, I know the roads in Pond Inlet, for example, I, I believe I haven't been there yet. I, I, I plan to personally attend the application because it's kind of symbolic for me and for the company. Um, but their roads are dusty and people, people live right on the roads. And so it's a huge impact on the, on the health and well-being of the community. Uh, and to address the technical question, uh, the products are designed, both of them, to perform better in wet weather and enhance engineering properties in the rain. And so dust stop, uh, it may lose some color in the rain. Uh, that's not the effective ingredient of the product. That's just, that's just the pigmentation, but it won't leach out. The effective parts of the product will not leach out in the rain and will give you a higher performing road in wet weather. And same thing for Ursine. In fact, Ursine is fully biodegradable, so you won't even see traces of the product um, after it's set. And, you know, 30 days later, you wouldn't even see a trace of the product there. Uh, but the long-term effect is a, a higher performing uh, road in wet weather. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. And another question that we have here is, and Todd, by the way, there's an active discussion happening in the chat box right now. So, oh, well, you know, I should uh, probably, I, I, I haven't I even looked at that. Yes. Yeah, but, but I will provide you a copy of that later on. But the next yeah. question is, uh, how does Earth Enzyme compare to uh, a butamine emulsion for rod, rod cap, capping and stabilization. Sure. Yeah, no, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, it would actually be a complementary product. It wouldn't be a, a supplementary product. Uh, so asphalt or asphalt emulsions are used as a, generally speaking, as a sealing coat. They don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, weight bearing capacity, really depending on which, which one you use. Uh, but uh, uh, it's used as a, as a seal coat over top of an unpaved road. And so Ursong would be, act as a stabilizer underneath that seal coat. Uh, to give you more stability underneath, so less shrinking and swelling, uh, higher CBI, higher density, so a higher performing base, which ultimately should lead to a higher performing uh, seal coat on top, whatever that seal coat happens to be. Now, there's been some people debate whether or not it can be used as a replacement. It all depends on the type of traffic and, and that sort of thing. But uh, for the most part, we're not trying to make it a, a replacement for, for asphalt. Uh, if you want to use it with asphalt, it can absolutely be a substantial benefit to the asphalt by potentially increasing, uh, reducing the depth of the asphalt or increasing its lifespan. Excellent, thank you for that. And it's, it's always good to have a, you know, a solution that's complementary to what, uh, whatever else is out there. Um, somebody had asked us for the slides. Yes, the slides will be available after the presentation to all those that have registered. So Todd, seeing that we've reached the top of the hour, 
could you just maybe say some closing remarks and then we can say goodbye to our guests. Absolutely. Well, I, well, I mean, first of all, I know a lot of our guests are, are uh, tuning in from other parts of the world. So I wanted to thank you guys. Uh, I know it's late. Uh, Ivan, I'm looking at you in particular and anybody else in uh, Asia or Australia area. So thanks for staying up so late. Really, <laughs> really appreciate it. And uh, no, I mean, I, I think uh, some closing remarks. Uh, I talk a lot about energy. I'm into mindfulness. Uh, anybody who knows me, hears me talk about it a lot. And, you know, we, I think uh, we're, we're creating a lot of positive energy these days. Uh, you know, in the, in the mining uh, industry in particular with, uh, with the Green Road program, we're excited to see where that's going to take us. Uh, it's, you know, when you, when, you, when you have, you know, certain pillars of a, of a, of a company, I mean, the, the technology is one thing, but uh, when we, we combine it with the, with the unique customer experience that we create and the CSR initiatives and all the sort of the philanthropic or the always do us right piece, uh, which I'll talk about earlier, uh, it, uh, it's, it's seeming to come together. So, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to talking to people that are interested in, in the same type of stuff. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Todd. And uh, thank you very much to our guests from around the world. Uh, we look forward to joining, to, to, to having you join us again on our next webinar when we're introducing another awesome uh, mining innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. You take care, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks, Charles. Appreciate the opportunity. Bye, everybody. Thank you.